Hi, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nishar Sharma. In today's session, we are going to be speaking about technology bubbles. Now, for the ones who have no idea what are technology bubbles, in the very first part of today's uh, talk, I'm going to share with you what are technology bubbles and how they make you lose your money. In the second part, I'm going to share with you how can you leverage these bubbles to make money. In the third part, I'm going to share with you if we are currently living in a bubble, is AI the next bubble and are we already a part of it? And in the fourth part, I'm going to share with you how can you be immune and unaffected from these bubbles and move towards financial freedom in the long term by being who you are. So without any further ado, let's get started. So let's say that we've got this beautiful balloon. You know, he's also saying hi to you. So, and people are like, wow, this balloon looks really beautiful, really strong. Let me put some air in it. And then the balloon becomes a little bigger. And then someone's like, wow, man, like this has a lot of potential. Let me put some more air in it. This balloon can maybe become a hot air balloon and make me fly. Let me put some more air in it. This balloon can take me to the moon. Let me put some more air in it. Forget the moon. This balloon can take me to Mars. This balloon can take me to Pluto. Now, that's a separate thing that the person's going to freeze, but it can take me to Pluto. This balloon can consume, it can contain the entire galaxy. So people keep putting more and more and more air into this balloon, but the balloon's not able to take it. It's not as strong as we think it was. And bam, the balloon bursts. You can compare this balloon with a new technology. The air that's put in, in this balloon is the money that people like you and I invest in these technologies. And the person who's putting air in these balloons are people like you and I. Now the question is, how are these bubbles, how are these balloons, how are they formed? How do they burst? Let's talk about it. So in the very first phase, media companies on the internet, offline, online, and a lot of financial institutions, a lot of financial analysts, they create a lot of hype and over-optimism about a technology. Like you've heard about AI, you've heard about digital currencies. A lot of hype and optimism is created. A lot of exaggerated claims are made about the technology, things like, this is going to be the next big thing, this is going to change the world, this will make me a millionaire. These kind of exaggerated claims are made by everybody. Then, the second phase enters, Wherein a lot of investors, you know, people like you and I, we put in a lot of money in these technologies thinking that they'll make us a lot of money. We're going to become millionaires. We're going to become financially free. Then we tell our peers, peer pressure is created. We share on social media. We make little profits. We share it everywhere. Then a huge influx of cash is added in these technologies. But then enters phase three, wherein investors realize that this technology is not what we thought it was. It's not meeting expectations. It's not really living up to the promises. People start taking the money back. The bubble bursts. The value of your investment vehicles, let's say you invested in a company stock or a digital currency, and we've all seen you know, different markets crash all these years. The value of these investment vehicles reduces, and a lot of people lose a lot of money. Like a very good example is the example of the dot-com crash. Like way back in the 1990s, a lot of dot-com companies were formed like Amazon, eBay, and people were calling the internet the next big thing. A lot of investors were investing in these companies. People thought that these internet companies are going to change the world. A lot of similar companies were being created as well. But then, eventually people realized that these companies knew you know, how to have huge market capitalization and revenues, but they did not really have predictable ways to make a profit. Investors started losing trust in these companies. They started taking their money out. A lot of people lost money. And then we had the dot-com crash, the dot-com bubble. Right, so let's talk about money. How can you leverage these bubbles to make a lot of money? To explain this, I'm going to share a theory with you, which is called the diffusion of innovation. Now, whenever a new technology enters the marketplace, the top 2.5% people that you can see on the left-hand side, the, the leftmost side, are the innovators. These are people like Steve Jobs, people like Jeff Bezos, you know, people like Elon Musk, people who build brands like Apple, people who build brands like SpaceX or Tesla or PayPal. You know, so innovators are the ones who make the most amount of money and it's not easy for everybody to be an innovator. And that's where the second part of the equation comes in, the early adopters, which is 13.5% of this particular equation. These people are the ones who adopt technology really fast. So tell me something, how many of you guys um, had access to the wired internet when it was first launched in the early 2000s? Yeah, early adopters. How many of you guys got access to Wi-Fi when it was first launched? Wi-Fi? How many of you guys had iPhone 1? Yeah. So people who get access to these technology items early are the early adopters. So if you enter the market, like by entering the market, I mean if you 
invest in terms of money or time or energy. Being an early adopter, the bubble is about to go high and the value of your investment vehicle will increase. Then we've got the next uh, particular segment, which is the early majority. Early majority get inspired from the early adopters that, wow, man, there's something is happening. Something is going to change. That's the early majority. If you are in the early majority, yeah, you can make a profit. You can make money. But then we've got the late majority and the laggers. And if you become, if you become a part of the late majority, the value starts to dip and people lose money. If you are in the late majority or if you are in, you know, if you're a lagger, that's 16% of the equation. This is what's happened with pretty much all the bubbles out there. You know, the, the bubble reached its peak. It's going viral and people are like, wow, people have made so much money. This technology is growing. The stock prices are going high. And they invest a lot of money, but it's too late. The bubble is about to burst. So this is how it works. Now, the question is, how can you leverage these bubbles to make money, like I said? To leverage these bubbles, what you want to do is either you want to be an innovator, start something that's, that's totally new, that's totally life-changing, which is very difficult to do, or you want to be an early adopter. Or maximum, you want to be in the early majority. But don't be in the late majority or don't be a lagger. It is said that each of these phases lasts for 16 years. So let's say a new technology comes out, okay? And then the early adopters technology, uh, I mean, that phase is going to stay for 16 years. The early majority phase is going to stay for 16 years. And then 16 years after that and 16 years after that. Today is the time wherein you really want to start taking AI very seriously. I'm not saying that go ahead and build an AI company. No. But start learning about it. Start investing in AI companies if you can. Start investing in terms of your knowledge, your time. This is the time. You know, The innovation has been done, and the market is waiting for the early adopters. In fact, there are a lot of early adopters out there. Another thing that you can do to leverage these, you want to diversify your investments. Like, let's say you're in your, you're in your early 20s, let's say, and you've got 20,000 rupees. You know, you are thinking of investing 20,000 rupees somewhere. I would not recommend you to put all of that money in one investment vehicle. Don't do that because it's very risky. You really want to do your risk analyzation, like how much risk can you really take? Like if you're in your early 20s, fine, you can still invest, you know, in different investment vehicles. But as you approach your 30s, 40s, 50s, you've got more responsibilities, you've got a family, you've got credit and all of that. So your risk appetite is going to reduce. So you also want to be sure about your risk appetite, like how much risk can you really take? Another thing that you want to do is research. So don't believe what the market is saying, honestly. Don't believe all of these, you know, these things that you see on social media about XYZ being the next big thing, don't believe it. All of, you know, most of these articles, most of these, um, you know, the, most of this content that you see is paid. Most of it is sponsored. So you want to research about the companies, go to their websites, have a look at their white papers, you know, read about them, have a look at news articles, um, and very importantly, learn about the founders. Learn about the core team that's running that technology. What is their track record? Have they built successful businesses? Have they, you know, like, where do they come from? What are their backgrounds? Because based on that, you would be able to identify if it's even worth investing in that technology or not. And another thing you want to ask yourself is, are you an emotional investor? Or are you an emotional person altogether? That you get really, you get affected, you know, like if someone's asking you to do something, you get really influenced and you take action. How many of you guys are emotional? Like, you get, you care a lot about what other people think, what other people say. So you want to ask yourself, do I take my investment decisions just like that? Like, do I get easily influenced? So fine, this is how you're going to leverage these technologies. Now, talking about AI companies, Let's, let's think about this. Is AI the next bubble? Are we living in the AI bubble? Honestly, time will tell. But one thing is for sure. Unlike the dot-com crash, um, you know, AI is very diversified. Like, we've, heard, we've all heard of tools like ChatGPT. We've have, you know, heard of tools like MidJourney. There are, uh, if not hundreds, thousands, or maybe hundreds of thousands of AI tools out there. The demand is really, really high. And it's not just limited to content. It's pretty much everywhere. You know, there's an application that you can become friends with. You can become friends with AI. And every time you chat with them or talk to them, they will learn about you. You tell them your name, you tell them where you're from, they will remember it and they will bring it up in the next conversation. So AI is pretty much everywhere. It's very diversified. A lot of governments are also supporting AI, even the Indian government. A lot of research is going on, you know, and it's not just limited to one industry, you know, be it health, automation, everywhere. AI is making life easier. It is, help, it is helping people really automate pretty much everything and saving a lot of time. So is this a bubble or not? I don't, I don't know. Time will tell. But this definitely is a time for you to be an early adopter. Invest in AI companies and stocks, 
uh, mutual funds that have you know AI companies in their portfolio. If you don't want to invest money, start learning about AI. Prompt engineering, start learning about that. Start making use of AI to build businesses. I'll give you some examples. So I, I run a clothing brand. I'll tell you how we make use of AI. We make use of AI to write our ad copies. We run a lot of uh, ads, so we write, you know, we've used AI to write ad copies. We, we've used AI to come up with product names. So whenever I'm naming a product, it gets very difficult to come up with new names and unique names altogether, so we make use of AI to come up with product names. We, we use AI tools like Midjourney to come up with designs. So I created a design for the US market, put it on a t-shirt and sold it on the internet. An AI-based design. We've used those, you know, we've used AI to create designs for shirts, for leggings, and all different sorts of products. A lot of people are using AI to provide freelancing services. That, that pretty much everyone can do today, right now. Within an hour, you can create your profile and you can start offering freelancing services. Related to writing, related to content, related to coming up with brand names, it is very, 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 very diverse. If you're thinking that AI is new, no, it's not. It's not new. I mean, now we're just getting to know about AI because it's going viral, but today, right now, is the time for you to be an early adopter and you know, leverage this opportunity. Now the question is, let's say that you don't care about technology at all. You don't care about AI, you don't care about technology bubbles or whatever. If you're like that, what you want to do is you want to invest in the person you trust the most and that person is you. That person is you. Now the question is, how can you do this? To do this, you want to build the brand called you. I'm going to ask him, okay, let's say, okay. So, okay, ma'am, what's your name? Isha, okay. What's your name? Seema. What's your name? Akash. Akash? Angaj. Angaj. Okay, let's say I want to build the brand called Angaj or Isha. And Isha? And let's say I want to build the brand called Seema. So you will start building the brand called you, and then people will start investing in the brand called you. Now the question is, how can you do that? First, I have to add value to people's lives. I'm gonna give you an example. How many of you guys have seen ads of fashion brands? Fashion brands, Facebook ads, Google ads, great. You know what? Fashion brands add a lot of value to your lives even before they've sold you the product. They're already adding value, I'll tell you how. These fashion brands, make you think, they make you give a feeling of looking good. They, they give you a feeling of looking confident. Luxury brands, you know what? A person feels rich before the person's even got that luxury product. A person sees a luxury showroom, he's feeling rich already, and then he walks in. That's value. Then you've seen YouTubers, you've seen creators who you know, are giving so much value and helping you with relationships, with fitness, and whatnot. So to build a brand called you, you first want to add value. You want to add value to people's lives, and to do that, you can do multiple things. Let's say you're somebody who likes creating videos. YouTube is for you, Instagram is for you. Let's say you're someone who likes to write. Start a blog, go to LinkedIn. Let's say you're someone who likes to talk a lot, like you've realized I do. Start a podcast. Once you start sharing things, you will attract people who will trust you. You will attract like-minded people. Now you're gonna be like, what do, I, what do I create content about? You know what, I really believe that all of us, each and every one of us, has some unique capabilities. All of us are born with some gifts. What are your gifts? Ask yourself. What is that one thing that you're always curious about? It could be relationships, fitness, love, finding a partner, getting rich, whatever it is. Everyone has a genuine curiosity for something and no one's asking you to be curious about it. Like no one's asking you to read that particular chapter and give an exam, you just wanna read about it because you like it. Maybe some of you guys are, are really crazy about writing or reading watching movies, whatever it is. You want to start sharing that on the internet. Ask yourself, what do your friends ask you, for, ask you for advice about? What is it? Ask yourself and acknowledge yourself for it. And then start creating content about it. Just share whatever you're learning, share whatever you've learned, build an audience, build connections, and then what you want to do is you want to identify the problems that your audience has. They research about the market, so you're gonna build your own audience, you're gonna research about the market, and then you'll identify the problems the market has. And then what you'll do is you'll create solutions for those problems. You'll create real solutions for real problems. I'm not asking you to just wake up one day with a dream and just start going and making a website and running ads, no. Build an audience, understand them, give value, make them trust you, ask them what's going wrong with their lives, and create a solution in terms of a product, a service, a business. If you don't want to go for business, no problem. You'll attract job opportunities, you'll attract freelancing projects, you'll start side hustles, your life will change. I'm not asking you to be a YouTuber or the next creator, no, I'm just asking you to be yourself. 
you're already yourself. Just showcase it to the world. Because I truly believe that each and every one of us, in fact, let's talk about you. I truly believe that you are beautiful. And the world deserves to witness the beautiful you. Thank you so much.